Hello, and welcome to coverage of custom standard casual matches. I'm Caillou, and today we're going to be watching a match between Janna, who is on Red Black Tradition, and Lukewarm Pasta, who is on a White Red Arm. So Janna's deck is essentially um, an aggressive mid-range deck, which gets a lot of uh, recursive value out of its titular card, uh, Tradition, which al allows you to play uh, one card from your graveyard each turn. Meanwhile, Lukewarm Pasta's deck is a completely aggro deck, which uses the uh, the titular mechanic Arm uh, to basically like grow its creatures extremely big in order to have like uh, explosive turns as well as like some like mid game potential uh, if your opponent manages to stabilize. So what Arm does is it creates and attaches an equipment that gives plus one plus one to a creature, and it has an equip cost of two. The idea is you stack a bunch of these, uh, you have a bunch of effects that create them, and you stack a bunch of them on a single creature um, to like basically just grow it to ridiculous proportions. There's a creature called Havel, which makes equip cost zero, so you can shuffle around the arm tokens very like uh, like as you please. And there's also like um, essentially like evasive creatures like this aerial gunner, so you can put them all on the gunner. Swing in the air, kill your opponent real quick. It's a good time. So, Lokrum Pasta played Rooftop Sniper, Sniper turn 1. Unfortunately, the image for this does not appear to be working. But it's a 2-1 that gets first strike as long as it is equipped. Meanwhile, Janna just has to start off with a tapped land. Um, did top deck a tradition there, which is very good. Um, the gaining life is good versus the aggressive deck, and it's just kind of the best card in the deck, honestly. Um... However, not having like another uh like meaningful play until like like I guess Jonna can curve out, play currency, play Ghost in the Machine, play Tradition, but Ghost in the Machine can't block, currency doesn't do anything meaningful on the board, and Lukewarm Pasta, meanwhile, is just gonna uh have a very aggressive start here. Can play the currency now. So yeah. So both decks uh also have currency as an engine. Um so one thing to mention about both Currency and Tradition is that they are discoveries. Um, if you've played Dominaria, think of them as sagas, where you essentially like do each of the modes, except uh, on the last mode, uh, it stays as a static effect rather than sacrificing itself. So tradition static effect is you can cast a non-land card from your graveyard each turn. Currencies is that you can uh, sack uh, artifacts for value. Uh, so it creates treasure tokens on its own, but also you can sack the arm tokens for value. If, and um, that kind of like uh, helps shore up one of the big weaknesses of aggro decks is that uh, they have very bad card advantage usually, or not very bad, but like very like situational card advantage, and like it's sometimes you can just run out of gas. Um, cards like uh, currency and scrap market, which is um, just like just gas. It's a variation on trading post, I believe is the name of the card. It's a cannon card. Um, so both of these cards together just allow you to get strong iterative value. Also, Lucrum Pasta top decked what is almost certainly the best card in the deck, um, Havel the Rock. So Havel the Rock um, is a 3-3 three, three for 3. It gets plus 1, plus 1 for each equipment you control. Not just equipment that are attached to him, equipment you control. Um, and uh, he make equip costs uh, you pay 0. So you can like shuffle around your equipment, put them on him if you want to just Voltron up, or you can like just shuffle them around as you please as you get more and more equipment. So Janna has a few turn three plays they could do here. They could play Deadeye Shinobi, which is a really good card. On ETB, you can sacrifice an artifact to shoot something, which, you know, play a land, Deadeye Shinobi, sacrifice a treasure, shoot Havel is probably the best line here. Ghost in the Machine, a 3-1 flying, which basically never goes away unless you exile it. Um, so, I think here, definitely, like, the better play is Deadeye Shinobi, Sack a Treasure, Shoot Havel, and then next turn, uh, Tradition. Also, a secret, like, hidden mode of Deadeye Shinobi is that it itself is an artifact, so you can sacrifice itself, just as, like, a 3-mana deal 3 damage or something, and then keep bringing it back with Tradition every turn as like a pseudo-removal spell. So I'd, I think Janna here is probably just going to sack a treasure, and then kill Havel. 
which also makes sense because then you can like trade the dead eye shinobi with the rooftop sniper next turn as long as they don't uh, uh, manage to arm it. So yeah, sacks the treasure, shoots Havel. That takes away one of the scariest threats on Lukewarm Pasta's field and probably like entire deck. Next turn, Pasta does have the opportunity to go uh, scrap market, uh, arm rooftop sniper and just attack through. Or aerial gunner and just attacking works as well. Um, back in action, unfortunately, doesn't hit Havel because Havel is converted mana cost 3. Um, it brings back a card with the CMC 2 or less. So it could bring back this rooftop sniper. I think the back in action is probably actually more like bad in action because of uh, Aerial Gunner and Havel are the two most impactful cards in your deck and therefore the ones that will be most likely to die. Uh, you probably just want more copies of Creature instead of back in action here. Anyways, Lokram Pasta plays the Aerial Gunner. It's effectively a 2-2 Flying Haste, which is really strong in and of itself. But also, uh, one of one point of that power comes from a, uh, a weapon token, which you get from arming it, which adds additional synergies. So now I think Janna can play uh, Tempered Onkelim to just develop their board more, or they could play Tradition. I think the temptation here is definitely play the Tempered Onkelim as a creature, um, gain three life to st to like stymie the aggro. Um, but I think that Tradition is just the best card in the entire deck, and you want to have it online as soon as possible. So uh, this is Janna's first time playing this deck, so I don't know if they will uh, like choose to play Tradition over Temper on Onkelim, because I think that is like a deck piloting experience thing. So evidently Janna did realize it. We'll be tapping out for Tradition. Um, goes back up to 16 life and gets to mill 2 in order to set up for the final mode of Tradition. Um, I don't think there's anything in Pasta's deck that can kill Tradition. So Pasta's hope now is just uh, race Janna. And Janna has like a really strong uh, loop once they hit 5 mana of like uh, play Tempered Onkelim, gain 3 life, sack Tempered Onkelim to currency to draw a card, and then replay Tempered Onkelim using Tradition. Um, so that's a really strong way to like uh, gain enough life to like put Janna out of like burn range uh, if Lukewarm starts like putting on the pressure. And then eventually, uh, once Janna draws into like stuff that can kill Lukewarm's uh, board, can just use the Tempered Onkelim to start draining uh, Pasta's own face. Anyways, Pasta's gonna tap out for the scrap market. Probably just going to um, sack the treasure, arm uh, the aerial gunner, or arm, or could ar arm the rooftop sniper and then attack with that because then Dead Eye Shinobi can't block it without. Uh, with, like normally, Dead Eye Shinobi would trade. Here, Dead Eye Shinobi would just chump. So yeah, it's just going to arm the aerial gunner. It goes up to a three-three. And Janna doesn't have anything that can fly other than Ghost in the Machine, but Ghost in the Machine can't block. So it's kind of just going to have to eat. Um, this aerial gunner damage until Janna can find it, um, a removal spell. Or, of course, another option is uh, sack the Deadeye Shinobi, like once Tradition is online, um, sack Deadeye Shinobi to currency and then bring it back. That won't be needed, though, because uh, Janna just top decked a Deadeye Shinobi. So, first, uh, the Tradition resolves, mills a Hunter Seeker, which is good. And a banish, which you don't want to mill, because it only brings back uh, permanent cards, so you can't cast the banish from your graveyard. Um, but did I shinobi sacrifice the treasure? Shoot aerial gunner seems like the right play here, and then you can swing in with the dead eye shinobi without fear. Oh, it's not tapping the double red, or I guess you can assume that royal domain fi fixes anyways, so the mana doesn't really matter. So is going to play Dead Eye Shinobi, sack the treasure, shoot Aerial Gunner, and next turn Tradition comes online, and if Janna hits uh, another land next turn, um, that's when we get like all of the five mana loops with currency. Meanwhile, Lukewarm is hitting an unfortunate stretch of uh, Flood here. Their only creature is Rooftop Sniper. They're going to pay two to sack one of the uh, Katanas, to draw a card, hits a quick draw vigilante, 
Now that's a good card. 3-3 three, three for 3 with Vigilance, which is already like just a, a good base rate. Um, and whenever it attacks, uh, you can arm it. Now, like if it isn't already armed, um, which might seem weird, because you're like, okay, so just why doesn't it just arm one? Well, you can move the uh, equipment to another creature, so you can keep re arming. So that's a really good uh, top deck for Pasta to hit there. Anjana's side doesn't hit another land, which is unfortunate. Does hit another tradition. Um, I think playing, I don't know if playing the other tradition would be the right call here. Um, hmm. And Epic of the Lovers doesn't seem super great right now. Um, I think right now, if you're Janna, you just play the Tempered Onkelim, gain 3 life. Um, or actually, maybe just play Tradition, gain 2 life, and try to have that online. I don't know. Like, whatever it is, Janna just needs to hit that 5th land so they can start doing currency loops with the Tradition. So Janna is going to try and play Banish from their graveyard, which can't happen because um, traditionally brings back permanence. So Janna is going to pay 3, play the Tempered Onkelum, probably just gain back the life. Oh, interesting. Janna instead deciding to drain Pasta for 3 life there. Um, I think that, like, I do agree that Red Black is a, like, aggressively oriented deck. Um, but I think that Pasta's deck is way more aggressive, um, and therefore I'd be more worried about, um, like, I'd be more worried about, like, my own life total in this matchup. So, Lukewarm is just going to attack with the Quick Draw. Interesting, I'm surprised that, uh, Lukewarm isn't also attacking with the Rooftop, because Rooftop now has First Strike, so it can't really be profitably blocked. Um... Also, these Parish's commands are going to quickly come online now, because um, now Lukewarm has three uh, useless or quote useless to tap um, equipment, which can turn on Parish commands. So the mechanic here that's important is Tithe, which Tithe you can essentially uh, get an extra effect by tapping three creatures and or artifacts, since equipment are artifacts which never get tapped. Um, they make, uh, you know, a very convenient way to turn on Tithe for these Parish's commands, turning them into a uh, one-mana path to exile, essentially. Oh, so Pasta uh, paid two to Currency to sack one of the weapons, and then drew into an Aerial Gunner, and then played it main two. See, I'd see Janna is definitely off the back foot here, and probably should have gained the life with a Tempered Onkelim. Um, if they top, okay, so they did top deck a land here, so currency, so okay, so currency dead eye shinobi can kill the aerial gunner or the rooftop sniper. Um, the quick draw vigilante is still a problem, but then you can like double block neck and, and do something, or um, you could probably like stall out until you get to six mana and then epic of the lovers to shoot down quick draw vigilante. So for now, just currency, draw a card, uh, and then use tradition to bring back the Dead Eye Shinobi that you just sacked to shoot the rooftop sniper is probably what I'd do here. But interesting, John is just going to end. Um, I don't think John Jana doesn't have the mana, so maybe just holding up Epic of the Lovers um, and then could Royal Domain to create a petal on end? Um, I guess the problem is, or could like also do currency on end step. Um, meanwhile, Pasta is just gonna attack with a quick draw vigilante. Has a long journey. It's an O-ring, but only hits walkers and creatures, so will not be able to get the tradition. This so is gonna tap five, Epic of the Lovers. I guess, uh, Okay, so shoot Aerial Gunner for two, and maybe, oh, I guess, oh, that actually makes sense. Two to the gun, oh, no. Okay, never mind. So I thought what John was going to do is two to the Gunner, uh, 
one to the vigilante block with the dead eye shinobi because I think that would make a lot of sense. So in response, Pasta is going to arm the aerial gunner so it goes up to a 3 3 so it survives the um, Epic of the Lovers. And yeah, all of this exiled removal from Pasta will make it like super, like literally, if Pasta just goes main to um, Parish Command, exile one of your things, plus Long Journey, um, Janna's options for traditioning become like. Seri like seriously limited. Okay, so Janna blocked the Quick Draw Vigilante with the Tempered Onclim, but took three in the air from the Aerial Gunner. So, it is definitely kind of in a tight spot. Next turn, can Tempered Onclim, uh, using the Tradition, and recoup the three life lost? Um, but it's still very much on the back foot. And a Royal Janna really wants to see like a Banish here. Um, if you're lukewarm, I think you just perish this command on end step. Um, and if you're Janna here, I don't know what you do. I guess I don't. I don't think that Janna sees the currency uh, tradition lines because I think that killing the aerial gunner is like way more important at this point than gaining three life because it does effectively the same thing. So yeah, gain, going to gain 3 life back with the Tempered Onclim to stabilize. And then can pay 3, I guess, to Ghost in the Machine and then start attacking. Unless they do see the currency line and are going to keep the mana up to be able to currency on end step. And they just thought that gaining the life now was more important. So John is going to pay 3, play Ghost in the Machine from the hand. If this could block, it would be very good here. Um... Unfortunately, it cannot, so it won't be able to uh, deal with the aerial gunner. So next turn, Janna. So Janna's kind of stabilized here, is what they're thinking, because they can block um, with tempered on block quick draw vigilante with quick with the tempered onclim, and then take three from aerial gunner and just gain three life. But on end step, I think lukewarm pasta is gonna perish his command, tithe, and exile a tempered onclim, or it could just exile the Deadeye Shinobi and then on their own turn exile the other Deadeye Shinobi, so Janna is out of removal options. So yeah, just use the Parish's command to exile the Tempered Onclim. So now it can't be uh, infinitely brought back with uh, uh, with Tradition. I do think that De like Deadeye Shinobi was the better hit though? Because Deadeye Shinobi can permanently kill Aerial... Oh, actually no. Assuming Lukewarm Pasta arms Aerial Gunner this turn... Um, Dead Eye Shinobi is not a is no longer an issue because uh, he can put it out of the range of being killed by Dead Eye Shinobi. And yeah, Pace Three is gonna long journey the Ghost of the Machine. I don't know why he's doing this. I think it's because uh, Lukewarm Pasta missed the can't block text on it. And yeah, so I'm gonna swing out for seven uh, with Aerial Gunner plus Quick Draw Vigilante. I'm just I'm constantly questioning why Pasta isn't attacking with the rooftop sniper. Cause okay, even assuming that Pasta forgot that rooftop sniper has first strike at this point, um, trading with it is good because then you can back and action it, and your opponent is down a card. Unless you're scared of them um, getting it into grave for tradition, but they're going to block. Yeah, see, they're going to block at your quick draw vigilante anyways. So I think in response to the double block here, uh, Pasta is probably going to perish his command, one of the Deadeye Shinobis. Oh no, he's going to uh, scrap market. Uh, oh, so he's going to scrap market to buff the Vigilante and also is going to perish his command to kill one of the Deadeye Shinobis. Okay. What this does mean, though, is... Uh, Next turn, Janna can bring back the Deadeye Shinobi that dies from blocking and use it to kill the Aerial Gunner. So, by not scrap marking the Aerial Gunner, uh. Oh, but Janna's just gonna concede, unfortunately. I think Janna definitely had lines that could have, like, stabilized there, but. <clears throat> they definitely were on the back foot. So, are we going to a game two? Okay, so we're getting into game two. So, Janna has um, 
Banish is removal, Toxic Scrap Heap also acts as removal. Um, Epic of the Lovers can dig for engine cards. The problem is John doesn't have any creatures or engine cards right now. So I do think this is a right keep because you want lands, it does have interaction. But there's a currency though that is one engine. Currency also does well with Scrap Heap because you can uh, activate its make them a discard a card ability. You know, on Pasta's end of the table, um, it has like a really strong hand. Bunch of three drops. Again, I think the back in action is a really bad card in this deck because all of the best cards are at three. Um, but it definitely makes up for having kind of a lackluster start by just having bomb after bomb after bomb once uh, Pasta hits three, mon three mana. So now I guess the question is, does Janna want to run out Epic of the Lovers to draw a bunch of cards? Um, like discard the Royal Domain and the Mountain to try and draw some gas? Um, I think probably not, because you can keep up the Epic of the Lovers as like a secondary removal spell. Like I think right here, Pasta is going to play Havel, Aerial Gunner, or Vigilante, all three of which can be killed by a, an Epic of the Lovers for X equals 3, or with Aerial Gunner, X equals 2. And it's an instant, instant speed, too. So, yeah, so I think Janna can just Epic of the Lovers, X equals 2, kill the Aerial Gunner. Or if Janna wants to hold Epic of the Lovers, can just take 2 here and the next turn Toxic Scrap Heap the Gunner. Oh, interesting. So Janna's asking if um, they can respond to the ETB uh, before the equipment is attached. Which uh, I guess means that they're probably going to Epic of the Lovers X equals 1 so they don't have to use any of the treasures to just shoot the Aerial Gunner. So yeah, paying 3 for Epic of the Lovers X equals 1. Just a soft 1 ping to kill the Aerial Gunner. Um, not sure if I agree with that. Um, just because like, uh, I think taking the damage and then Toxic Scrap Heaping makes more sense. Because... Uh, you know that uh, Pasta has like strong things on three, and though you do have Banish, if Pasta keeps having gas, then you want uh, large removal spells to be able to kill them. Anyways, Janna top decks another um, tox toxic scrap heap. Um, probably just play the Royal Domain pass and can start making uh, petals with the Royal Domain, or also sacking. Uh, treasures on end to start drawing cards. Meanwhile, Pasta has is probably just going to play a uh, quick draw vigilante here. No, it's playing Havel. Okay. So Havel is definitely going to eat a banish next turn. I think that that is kind of an unquestionable reality. Or might eat double toxic scrap heap. That's also a possibility. So I guess what's going to happen is. John is going to kill Havel with either um, Banish or... Okay, actually, if Lukewarm Pasta equips... Yeah, so Lukewarm Pasta is going to equip the rifle, so Havel is immediately going to go up to a 5-5. Five, five. So Janna has to Banish the ha the Havel. Um, but then next turn, if uh, Pasta plays Quick Draw Vigilante, um, Janna can just double Toxic Scrap Heap it. Even if Pasta top decks another land so that he can uh, equip the existing weapon onto the Vigilante. So on end, John is going to pay two to crack one of the treasures, draw a card. It draws into a Dead Eye Shinobi. That's also a good removal for the Quick Draw Vigilante. And a tradition. So this is definitely a good keep. So I think Janna probably should just banish Havel here. No sense in, and like Havel's extremely scary. There's no sense in letting it stick around. Like tradition is good and all. But I think you have the time to be able to just, like, answer your opponent's scary stuff. So, yep, is going to banish Havel. And of note, this does exile Havel. So, but banish, basically what it does is, exiles Havel, gets all copies of Havel from Pasta's hand, which there are none, and all copies of Havel from Pasta's deck, of which there are three. Um... So this is a really good removal spell because it gives hand information, um, occasionally can two-for-one your opponent, um, and also preemptively rips like their best card out of their deck, assuming that you're using it on their best card. Um, 
The exile is also relevant because, um, like, assuming that, uh, like, this, assuming that Havel, like, you know, was within the range for back in action, would have been able to bring it back that way, but exiling it prevents that kind of recursion shenanigans. Okay, so Pasta's probably gonna play currency and then use the treasure to play Quick Draw Vigilante. Um, importantly, Quick Draw Vigilante is the last threat, um, in Pasta's hand, despite having four other cards. Um, and Pasta doesn't have enough uh, equipment to be able to perish his command. So Janna can just kind of start running out uh, Dead Eye Shinobi, etc. Like, next turn, uh, Dead Eye Shinobi, sack the treasure, kill Quick Draw Vigilante, um, play the Hunter Seeker, and then uh, Lukewarm Pasta can long journey either the Shinobi or the Hunter Seeker. But then Janna will have a threat and can start beating down Pasta. So yep, plays the Shinobi, sacks the treasure, shoots the Vigilante. You know, just flavor-wise, this is a really fun matchup. Samurai versus Cowboys, what's not to love? Oh, and it's going to end. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any reason not to play Hunter Seeker there. I don't know why Janna... Maybe Janna missed that? Or maybe Janna's holding up mana to sack Dead Eye Shinobi? But I think that that's a way worse play than just um, playing Hunter Seeker. See, so yeah, I think Lukewarm top decked the land, so it's just going to have to long journey the Dead Eye Shinobi. Next turn, um, if uh, Janna top decks a land, we'll have access to. Tradition into Hunter Seeker, which is another strong line. Because then you have the tradition to start giving recursion to your stuff. Um, doesn't have anything engraved right now. Okay, so in response to the long journey, John is going to pay to sack the Dead Eye Shinobi. Maybe that's what John was holding the mana up for because he didn't want to lose the Dead Eye Shinobi permanently. So John hits a temp Tempered Onclum off of Currency and then a Currency off of uh, the Normal Draw. So, hmm, I think the play is probably play currency, and then use the treasure that you created off of currency, plus the three other lands to play tradition. Or if you want to start getting aggressive, then play Hunter Seeker here, and then keep up the treasure. Or you can play Tempered Onclum as well, one of these two. But I think the tradition is just the best card in the deck. Nope, okay, he's going to run out the Hunter Seeker, and doesn't have mana for anything else other than the Toxic Trap Heap, but then Toxic Trap Heap is probably being saved as, like, uh, interaction. And Pasta finally hitting a creature off the top of his deck, gets an Aerial Gunner. Um, unfortunately, unbeknownst to him, it will get in for two, and then immediately get Toxic Scrap Heaped. Um, importantly, though, what this does do... Um, is that it gives a uh, pasta a tithe count of three for parish. So, uh, like, tithe is online for the parish's command. So, even if Janna goes Toxic Trap Heap, kill Aerial Gunner, uh, pasta still has treasure, weapon, weapon, um, and can tap all three of them for parish's command. So, even though Janna has Hunter Seeker and Tempered Onclim, uh, pasta can answer both of them. And then the only hit Janna will have off of Tradition will be the Dead Eye Shinobi that's already in Janna's graveyard, as well as Toxic. I guess Toxic Scrap Heap Looping is good. Because if you can get someone to uh, basically like no board and like no relevant cards in hand, you can just lock them out of the game by just like uh, playing Toxic Scrap Heap, sacking it to currency on their draw step, and then forcing them to discard what they just drew. So Janna now has ample mana, so can probably is going to play Tradition into Tempered Onclum. First is going to attack with a Hunter Seeker. Uh, if Pasta realizes they have a uh, Tithe, yeah, they're saying response. So I think they're going to perish his command, the Hunter Seeker. Yep, so Hunter Seeker gets exiled. Oh, in response, Janna is going to sack the Hunter Seeker to Currency to draw a card. Yeah. That is kind of a problem. So it gets removed, quote unquote, but 
it's not exiled and therefore can later be brought back by tradition. And wow, it's another tempered onkelim. So, if you're Janna here, I think you just play the tradition. Oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, you play the tradition, plus pay to, uh, to the Toxic Scrap Heap to kill the Aerial Gunner. So, yep, gonna Toxic Scrap Heap, kill the Aerial Gunner. Still has four mana, so can play tradition here. Um, and I think that is the right play right now. Just capitalize on this advantage. And yup, is tapping out for tradition. Goes back up to 20 life, and in two turns can start recurring the Deadeye Shinobi and Hunter Seeker. As well as, you know, loop Toxic Scrap Heap, loop Onkelim. I think this game is solidly in Janna's favor. Especially without, like, like Pasta can, like, dig for cards by, like, uh, sacking the treasure and the rifles to currency. But... Janna just has like so many like potential answers here. And Mills, um, a Toxic Scrap Heap and a Currency, both of which are acceptable tradition hits as well. So Pasta draws a Hunter Seeker, um, which again will unfortunately immediately get killed by Toxic Scrap Heap if he tries to play it. Of course, he can do what uh, Janna did. Uh, Jana did to him back to her by, in response to Toxic Scrap Heap, sacking it to Currency to draw a card if he keeps the mana up. He's going to pay two, sack a rifle, draw a card. Oh no, it's not. It's going to equip the weapon to Hunter Seeker. I thought he was going to sack the weapon to draw a card. And yeah, so it still has two mana here, so it can sack the Hunter Seeker to Currency in response to a to Toxic Scrap Heap. So, Janna hits a Ghost in the Machine off the top of her deck, just additional, um, like, uh, additional aggressive cards, which I don't think, I think Janna kind of wants to start drawing into, like, Vanish and stuff, because Janna has threats now, like, has inevitability, you just don't want to, like, also kind of get footing in, like, in this one interim turn, essentially. So, Janna's playing Ghost in the Machine, interesting. Um, I thought... I thought, if anything, Janna would play the Tempered Onkelin here. Because it's a 3-3, three, three, so it can profitably block stuff. Um, it's also just, like, good to start looping with currency, like, once Tradition comes online next turn. So, not sure on the Ghost in the Machine over Tempered Onkelin choice. Yeah, it's going to Toxic Strap Heap and kill the Hunter Seeker. And then next turn can start looping Tox Toxic Trap Heap or Dead Eye Shinobi. So anything that isn't named Havel will instantly die. So, oh, and Havel is already exiled because of Banish. So I don't think Pasta has any outs at this point. So On End is going to back in action the Hunter Seeker. Um, eh, yeah, yeah. This is, um, potentially good because it comes back armed because of back in action um and then if uh pasta attacks with it it turns into a 4-3 if he further equips a rifle to it it can't be killed by a, a single dead eye shinobi um so this could this could actually be good and jana's to two of jana's jana's banishes are already uh, in her graveyard and Liberated Armory is kind of bad here, without actual threats, but it is still just a good card in general. But I think Pasta's instinct was to play the Liberated Armory, but then immediately realizes, wait, I think I maybe want uh, mana to equip these rifles to Hunter Seeker. So he's going to attack with Hunter Seeker. Janna can't block, because Ghost in the Machine can't block, Hunter Seeker has Menace. This is doubly impossible to block. This is another reason that Janna should have played Tempered Onkelim. Because if Janna had played Tempered Onkelim last turn, um, Janna could play like another Tempered Onkelim uh, on her next turn, as well as doing like uh, a tradition currency loop. But next turn, now Janna will be forced to play um, uh, both Tempered Onkelims. So Janna is, doesn't have a reasonable response, but in response is going to sack a uh, toxic scrap heap to uh, 
basically make Pasta discard a card. In response, Pasta is going to perish this command to kill uh, the Ghost in the Machine. And since Ghost in the Machine becomes exiled here, uh, and Janna has no mana to sack it, it's just gone forever. And then Pasta is forced to discard the Liberated Armory. But, you know, this Hunter Seeker may, may just carry Pasta to victory. Because it constantly grows bigger. Um, next turn, will Janna have enough to be able to block it and kill it? So, it goes up to a 4-3. Assuming that Pasta equips both of these to it, it becomes a 6-5. So, Double Tempered Onkelim will be able to block it, yes. But equipping the weapons now does mean that it is outside of Deadeye Shinobi range. So if you're Janna here, I think you just uh, play the Fangmar Cave because Fangmar Cave is insane. It's a win con on a land. Um, play double, double Tempered Onkelim uh, and then probably Drain Pasta. Uh, and then that way you can block the Hunter Seeker next turn. Or could play Tempered Onkelim plus... Uh, I don't know, Dead Eye Shinobi or Hunt. Mm, I think it would be better just to play Double, temp double Tempered Onkelin from hand, not gonna lie. Yep, plays the Fangmar Cave. So, Janna playing a Tempered Onkelin. And now, gaining life is kind of pointless here because you're gonna be losing a bunch of life uh, to Fangmar Cave, anyways. Um, so, might as well just like go for broke here. Oh, and it's gonna. Yeah, no, I don't think Janna wants to bring back Toxic Crap Heap with the tradition. I think Janna should just play the other uh, Tempered Onkelim to be able to double block the Hunter Seeker. But no, okay, is going to Toxic Scrap Heap instead? This is a bad play. Because Toxic Scrap Heap to face is basically nothing. And um, this lets Hunter Seeker swing in unblocked again and then at that point it becomes a 6-5 and then like okay yeah it's just a bad time all around anyways Lupasta is gonna sack the uh, weapon to currency draws a land and then draws another land off the natural draw just really unlucky for pasta there so yeah pasta is gonna swing with the hunter seeker john is gonna take five the Hunter Seeker is going to go up to a 6-5. Um, next turn, Janna does not have enough mana to... Or will, oh, sorry, will have enough mana. Never mind. So we'll have enough mana to play Tempered Onkelim and flip Fangmark Cave. Um, and then can attack... Probably keep the Tempered Onkelim up as blockers and then swing for 6 with the Fangmark Cave. And yeah, like... If Janna had played the Tempered Onkelim last turn and double blocked, would have been able to tradition first Fangmart Cave and then pay uh, seven life and then gain three of it back with the Tempered Onkelim. And no, Janna is attacking with Tempered Onkelim first before flipping the Fangmart Cave, which is uh, because Fangmart Cave would have had haste there or pseudo haste because it came into play last turn. So, oh no. So this is definitely, I think, obviously this is Janna's first time playing the deck, so this is understandable, but some serious blunders on Janna's side of the table. So Janna playing the Tempered Onkelim now. Um, is Janna going to gain three life here or drain pasta? I think Janna should like dra yeah, drain pasta and now flip Fangmar Cave so that Janna has... Um, the ability to block the Hunter Seeker. Or just play like set another creature like Dead Eye Shinobi from Grave. And then Janna is gonna flip a uh, Hawkbora. So definitely a scary card. 6-6 six, six Death Touch. Kinda just kills Pasta, but if, the problem is, the risk is, um, if Pasta top decks a removal spell, like this Parish's command, um, can swing in for six. And Janna is just kind of like in like deep trouble. So yeah, Pasta is just going to perish his command, the Hawk Bora, and is going to put Janna down to one life. And yeah, 
Hostage is going to swing in for six. So I think if you're Janna, you would just play a creature from your graveyard and then don't attack with any of them. Um, or actually, no. Sorry, I lied. You Sorry, you play Deadeye Shinobi, sacrifice a Toxic Scrap Heap, and then attack with both the Onkelims and Pasta dies. Because I didn't realize that Janna had like uh, a way to kill uh, Pasta there. But yeah. Ooh, interesting. So Pasta is in response going to sack a weapon and probably try to dig for um dig for a parish's command to be able to tap down one of the He doesn't hit it there. Still has another chance. Cause if Pasta hits another Parish's command, can tap down one of the tempered uncle in start of combat. Um and then only take three here, and then next turn just kill Janna. Hits a long journey. That's not an instant, though. It has how many parishes? Yeah, that's three parishes commands in Pasta's grave. Hitting the last copy is kind of a pipe dream. Okay, so yeah, Janna's gonna sack Tempered Onkelim to currency, replay it with tradition, and that just kills Pasta. So, whew, surviving at one life, Janna takes game two over Pasta. Well, I guess we're not gonna have a game three. Which, you know, it is getting a bit late, so that's fair. So, good games to Pasta and Janna. And it ended up being 1-1 for Janna on red-black tradition. And lukewarm pasta on a red-white arm. Until next time, this is Caillou signing.